Hey everyone! So today I'm gonna go over how to make this pink gingham dress. Um, yeah, I'm just super excited about the Barbie movie and I love that I can pull from so many different outfits. And I thought this dress would be a cute way to ease back into things because it's been a while since I've done any creative work. Or, sorry, creative work. That's all I do. But um, it's been a while since I've done any personal pieces. So I want to get back into it, starting with the dress. Okay, so the first thing that I always do before I get started is I like to look up references of the thing that I'm going to make. And then I always try to find stuff that helps me later down the line, like I probably need a gingham pattern as such, and then I wanted to see what type of pleats they were, and I was trying to work it out visually what that looks like, and so they look like box pleats, which is great. And then I tried to find images of her back, but obviously it is covered uh, with her beautiful hair, but I'm assuming that it will be... Uh, just these little darts in the front and none in the back, I'm assuming, but here goes nothing. So without further ado, I'm going to get right into it. <laughs> uh, the first thing I want to do is actually make a waistband. I think that will be the base for everything. So how I like to do waistbands is I like to make just half of it and then unfold symmetrically so that I can just work on one side and the other one will come along for the ride. Okay, so I'm going to grab this pattern, copy, paste, and assign them. And I am using this model today uh, since we are doing a Barbie outfit I wanted to do a uh, someone with the right hair color and eyes uh, uh, where am I where are you okay now that I have that I'm gonna sew them together now let's see perfect Let's see where we're at. I think that's fine. Cool. Once I have that, I'm going to freeze it since uh, Marvelous, it tends to roll down. Sorry, I had an itch in my ear. That kind of looked gross, but maybe it was, but um, <laughs> sorry about that. Girls got to do what a girl's got to do. Cool. Then the second thing uh, that I want to do actually Sorry if you hear my phone I will actually turn it off That should have been the first thing But hey, I'm a novice uh, Wait Is that not how I turn off my phone? It's been a while since I've turned off my phone. Eek. That should be very telling. Alright. So the first thing I want to do is make a dress or <laughs> a pulley. And I'm going to do dividends of five. Or div divisible by five. Am I saying the same thing? I'm an artist, not a scholar. Alright. And then I believe for box pleats is one here, two, three, four, five. Okay. So I'm going to do offset pattern and I'm going to do five times five, 25. And let's do internal line. Uh, yes. Let's do that. And then I'm going to offset this internal line uh, by five. 
going to reverse direction so it goes the right way. Okay. And then I'm just going to grab these points and I'm going to do extend and add point to the pattern so that my pleat tool works. And with that, I am going to use my pleat fold tool and drag across the pattern. And this menu will pop up. I'm going to select box pleats since that is the one at hand. And as you see, there's one, two, three, four, five. Five things that are going to get folded. Increments of three. Yes, I believe so. Press OK. And then at this point, I'm going to go into my simulation properties and do zero. I like to do zero gravity when figuring out my pleats just so that I can understand the behavior. OK, so I guess this one was neglected. And that's going to be the bigger one. OK, that works. That works. Okay, so then this guy will get folded into this guy. Okay, so this, I use, I just grab it so that I can see where it is on the 2D. So I know which parts to sew together. So I'm going to do this guy into this guy. And while I'm here, for good measure, I'm going to sew that together. And then I'm going to sew this guy into this guy. This guy. This guy. Look, there we go. This guy into this guy. Cool. And let's sim that. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Now I have this gorgeous piece as my one pleat. And then this, these two segments are the parts that I'm going to sew onto our waist. So I'm going to sew from this point all the way across to this point. And I like to do my pleats in pieces just because uh, it's a little bit easier to understand what's going on. And then once I basically have one pleat, what's so great about that is I could just do, 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 do across the entire skirt. Uh, sometimes I feel like with pleats, I have a certain look, but then when I have a huge piece of fabric that I'm trying to go across the entire thing and pleat and then do the pleat sewing tool. Sometimes the numbers are off so the uh, pleats get sewn very strangely. So to avoid that, I like to do little by little, piece by piece. Okay. And I'm just going to grab this guy and copy paste. Like so. So this guy and then, oh my gosh. And then do our free sewing tool so I could sew across this guy across this way. Cool. Oops. Something like that. Same thing. And I noticed with her dress, there are five, one, two, three, four, five. And I think the measurements that I have currently, it'll give me about six rather than five. So let's see how to troubleshoot that situation. Okay, gorgeous. Oop. So there's three, okay. I'm too lazy to do simple math. I, I just put the gravity back on so that we can see our pleats and since they're not uh, just trying to figure themselves out. Cool. And then now what I'll do actually is I'm going to grab, I'm going to grab one guy. Actually, <laughs> I'm going to grab, oh, 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 I'm going to grab all of these guys and then select them all and then shrink them. That way I have that. And then let me adjust my sewing relationships. Oh, 
Oh. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I think it's still small. The reason why I think that is because ideally we need that one, the, this, well, this guy is the third pleat and the third pleat should be in the middle. So that being said, I'm just shrinking it until it visually looks like it's gonna sit in the middle of our skirt. I think we could just make it a touch smaller and yes I know some of you are gonna be like just do the math and I'm like don't tell me what to do man there's a will there's a way and I'm quite enjoying myself right now so please don't bum me out I just want to move these things around all right <laughs> I need this guy to be here somewhere here so obviously I'm gonna make these guys bigger and I'm just gonna shimmy these guys a little bit uh, you know what you guys you guys keep a good tab on me you know I won't do it I won't do it to you guys all right that and then now I get to make two more because I need five total so there's that and I'm gonna just sew this guy onto this guy okay so sorry if you hear that um Ah, this apartment, unfortunately, is right next to the um, parking lot, so I have quite a bit of traffic always, but hey, you know, I'm actually moving soon, so, <laughs> so long, noise, arrivederci, and I'm actually gonna, I'd rather, actually, you know what? <laughs> I was gonna trim it but I realized I like the length of my uh, waistband so I don't want to necessarily shrink my waistband since I like the length of it I'm just gonna make this a touch a touch larger awesome and then I'm just gonna shimmy everyone over just a little bit just so that everyone has a difference that's not perfect but it's not extremely off either okay cool I do have to sew these guys together but at this point what I'll do is I'm gonna grab all my patterns and do control H since this is a lot of moving around okay so that they just figure themselves out faster and then I'm gonna sew this guy into this guy cool I'm gonna sew this guy into this guy this guy into this guy uh, that guy cool now they're smushed together and now we have all five pleats now that we have that we're gonna copy paste the whole plate situation actually you know what can I control these I wonder what that gives me nope so I'm gonna copy and paste. Copy and paste. Cool. So this is all sewn together, I believe. Yes. It just needs to be reattached to the back. So let's grab all of our patterns. All of our patterns. And I'm just gonna rearrange this chunk to be in the back. Cool. And we're just gonna sew this guy into this guy. This guy. This guy. <laughs> All right. And then we're gonna sew this guy into this guy. Cool. And then once again, we're going to just sew everybody up. 
so <laughs> so that's what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna grab this so I know which part of the waist I'm sewing from because I uh, always forget I forgive but I never forget I used to say that every time someone spelt my name wrong. I forgive you. But I will never forget. Anyway, now that I've creeped everyone out, I'm just going to shimmy everyone over a little. And this is, again, just so that the difference between that last stitch isn't too severe. And it also gives me a nice opportunity to center my middle pleat. Pe <laughs> and that's always nice visually cool all right sim it all together cool so that's awesome now that everyone is in place i'm going to get rid of the strengthening so that they just lay a little oh hello what happened here oh it's just i guess it just folded a little funny on itself me okay and then I'm going to grab all my pleats and freeze them because I do see some intersection on my waistband and that just happens sometimes when you freeze and it's kind of a big move. So I'm going to just unfreeze the parts that are struggling and then it's like a micro sim pretty much just to get that waistband out. And then let's freeze that. And then now that everybody is situated... I'm just going to organize this in a way that will be very nice and clean and easy for me to manipulate. So now I'm going to make sure that I always keep the front pleats together and the back pleats. I'm just going to indicate it by a little gap. And this has nothing to do with your uh, fit or clothing, cloth making, but it has everything to do with your sanity. So keeping things organized has its benefits. And let's see where this skirt hits. So like really right truly on the knees. On the trailer, she has a bit of the underskirt is very floofy. So we will also Note that as we go along. Okay, so I'm going to grab all my bottoms and I'm just going to lengthen them. Oh, hello. There we go. Nothing looks weird, right guys? Just checking that that, that didn't um, happen again. Okay. And then just a little bit longer. Uh, I'm going to make it true a little bit below the knees so that when that underskirt is made, we can have that room because when the underskirt is added, it'll lift this length up a little bit because of the volume. So I'm just going to keep it a little bit under like so. Cute. All right, so now that we have our pleated skirts, I'm actually going to shimmy it over and I'm going to deactivate pattern and sewing and shift Q to hide it. And let's actually quickly make our underskirt. And how I would go about that is I'm just going to copy paste the waistband. So where are you? Oh, literally in whole body. Okay, so <laughs> what I'll do instead is I'll copy paste right next to them. That way it's not inside of her torso. Cool. And then I'm just going to shimmy this guy over. Oof. Whenever you are like na navigating around and you feel it doing something weird, like it's kind of stuck. Because sometimes that happens to me. You could always press 1 and it'll just kind of 
pivot you into an ortho one of the ortho cameras and then it'll allow you to kind of snap the behavior uh, back to normal so I'm just going to sew the bottom and the top uh, and then grab it's easier to grab from the 2D menu sometimes and we're going to sew it cool so that's our underskirt guys <laughs> gorgeous just gorgeous I'm going to press shift so that it snaps it straight I like doing this because it helps me uh, I don't know Uh, it helps me just keep my line straight. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm sorry, because I'm just coming off of work, so forgive me if I'm getting like weird on you guys. It's not intentional by no means. I'm just gonna align these guys so that I just need to adjust one line. We're just gonna expand this guy until I feel like there is some proper volume on this underskirt. Cool. Uh, cool. And so what I noticed about her underskirt is I feel like there is a few tiers of ruffles and so I kind of want to uh, represent that. There's a shot in the trailer where she goes down and uh, uh, I could see the little ruffles being added on to kind of help with the volume. So that is what I'm going to do. Whether it looks like this verbatim, I'm not sure. But I guess as long as the outside volume looks good, then I think this will look good as well okay and since i'm only now correcting my uh now i'm just addressing my ruffles i'm going to freeze my skirt so that it just has a faster time uh updating and simming the guy because if i didn't freeze it then everyone will have to like work with each other and it sims and then it collides and it just takes a long time so i like to freeze and then I slowly expand my ruffles so that we can get our ruffly look. Little by little, you know, I got time. Basically, I'm just seeing if that's the amount of gathering that I would like. It's hard to tell in a low, uh, higher particle distance. But, you know, since this is the underskirt, I am not too uh, specific on how much the gathering is. It's just more to help out with the volume. Okay, now that I have the right amount of gathering for myself, I am going to grab this guy and lengthen him just a tad. Because I do want this to be the same length-ish as the skirt on top. Now, some of you are going to be like, oh my gosh, why didn't you do the underskirt first? Well, I should probably tell you guys that I had a plan all along. It's all according to plan, but uh, I would be lying. I kind of forgot about the underskirt, and so that's why I started with the skirt on top. <laughs> Forgive me. Okay. Sometimes, sometimes I'm just, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to vibe here. Okay. And I used to do superimpose uh, over or side, but with ruffles, it kind of sometimes flips the fabric upwards and that's not necessarily what I want. So what I tend to do is just shimmy it as close as possible to the area it needs to be sewn onto and do strengthen. And that usually helps figure out the sim much faster. Cool. 
And it looked like it was tiered, but they all kind of landed this, like they all hit the same length. So I'm going to do tiers and just make sure that these guys are getting longer as they move up the skirt. Okay, same thing. Oh. And I try to keep my sewing relationships in the same direction just so that it's a little bit neater visually. Like, you know, sometimes I'm like, whoa, 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 who's getting connected to what? But uh, when they're in the same direction, it's much visually easier to see what's going on. And let's lengthen that just a touch so that it's all kip aesthetic. Honestly, I use that word when it's not even appropriate. I just like the way it sounds sometimes. Okay, guys, do you ever just use words? You know it's not the right time for it, but it, you just like how it sounds. That's kip aesthetic for me. Let me be cool. And actually, so to help with volume, I'm actually going to strengthen these guys. Or, um, I, actually, I don't think these should be strengthened. I think it's the actual skirt body that I'll strengthen. So it poofs it out a little bit. And what I will do is, I actually think the top tier, I want to expand to be a little bit wider because I feel like this, I don't necessarily want it to lay flat. I want it to be very crunchy. And eventually I have to change the cloth material, but I actually don't like changing it while I'm sketching out things or just in the beginning of um, making a piece of clothing. Just because when I, <laughs> sorry, just because, just because, uh, it's because when, what I've noticed is when I work with the custom presets, it eventually becomes really floaty in the sim behavior. It like gets this weird floaty feeling and so I try to keep everything at default because in the end those presets are only supposed to help out with uh, the folds, the fold behavior, but not necessarily the fit or anything. So while I'm still figuring out the article of clothing, I try to keep everything in default. Cool. So I think that's a really good amount of volume and let's bring back our guy. So let me freeze everything and then bring back our skirt, shift Q to make it reappear. And I'm gonna do control H and control K and unfreeze it. So let's grab all our front and pull it out. And then grab all of our back and pull it out. Okay, and just for good measure, I'm going to use layer one, just so that the skirt really understands that, hey, I really need you to be on the outskirts. <laughs> and then once it's Outside, I'm going to turn the layer off because it does tend to get buggy when the layers are on. And then I unstrengthened it just to see how it's laying. I think that's a pretty good amount of volume. I'm going to grab all my ruffles and sim them with the skirt on top so that the folds kind of look a little more natural because obviously this kind of looks strange to me. So let's see if that helps. And it does. What is happening here? Sometimes the sewing relationships, it wants to, there we go, fold out instead of in, or like over instead of under. But nothing like a 
just like shifting it around will help kind of have it settle properly if you guys ever run into that. Sorry guys if you hear my dog, he's protecting me. Cool. Nice. So I think that's the skirt. I do think these panels, so actually let me turn off my internal lines so I can see how wide these pleats are. There we go. And then I'm going to change the color to something where I can see the pleats a little bit better. So something like that. So what I don't like is even without the internal lines, you see that indentation? I don't appreciate it. So what I'm going to do is in the middle of everybody, all these internal lines, I'm going to delete them since they are no longer necessary. And that should help give these pleats. a better look and I'm just gonna shift this to a warmer pink oh my god it's so pretty I don't want to make it too bright because it's uh, as you see what the brighter it is the more hard it is to see the shadows so I, I just want something that's a little bit um, muted if you will so I'm gonna bring back my internal lines because I do use that quite a bit as you can see, it kind of helps see where your pleats are being placed and if they're laying nice and neatly. Da, da, da. Cool. And the way I did it, I know I didn't end up using the pleats so, but sometimes it's because I really just want to understand how the pleats are getting sewn into each other and when I do it in like a batch, uh, sometimes it's wrong and I just don't know uh, where it went wrong, you know? <laughs> okay, so now that we have our bottom looking good, let us work on our top and same thing where I'm just gonna copy paste from the waist. I'm just gonna put it off the body so I can see it and it doesn't uh, roll into, or it doesn't, spawn inside of her torso <laughs> if you will. and as you can see the waistband is really where I uh, build a lot of my other patterns so definitely if you are like where do I even start try going for the waistband first a lot of people start with the sh top or the bottom but really it's the waistband <laughs> That has all the magic for me. Okay. And I'm gonna at this time grab all of my skirt parts. Oui. Oh gosh. Like so. And freeze them all. And then once I have created this guy, I'm going to actually separate him a little bit away so I know uh, what I'm working with. And since it's the first sim, I am just going to strengthen it so that it gets to where it needs to much faster. And let's cover her up, make her decent. Beautiful. So decent, right guys? <laughs> and just rising it up to just cover my bases here. Cool. So I do think it's a little bit tall. And let's check out our ref to just see where everything is laying. I think this is more or less in this in a good spot and then in the back it's laying just a little bit under just shy of that uh, shoulder the <sighs> stay in school kids let me look it up shoulder blade is that what that is Am I the smartest person in the world? <laughs> I am. 
Okay. <laughs> Shoulder blade. Uh, I took a anatomy class in art school um, where, you know, very intelligent people made very intelligent decisions and named all these bones and sounded really smart and I'm over here just not retaining at all. Don't be like me. Uh, and then here. So I'm gonna add another point here. Uh, I'm gonna change this length to two. This as well, change length to two. Okay. Now that I have that, those are pretty much the reason why I made that is because right now I'm going to try to make this shape where it's like it goes upwards and then tapers or tapers open to the rest of the top. You know, <laughs> forgive me guys if my terminology is wrong. I am just a 3D artist at heart and a clothing enthusiast. I did take a year in fashion, but not really because it was just freshman year. So I was barely taking anything. You know what? I didn't take anything in the subject, but I had the intent to. So with that being said, I, I'm not like too foreign to it. Wait, what am I saying? <laughs> what I'm trying to say is I'm not too foreign to fashion, but I pretty much am, guys. The reason why I did not pursue fashion as a career and I did 3D is because fashion men, they need things to be precise. And that's just not my jam, you know? I'm an artist, you know? I just, I just make things because I like it. I'm going to lower this guy because it is hiking really up into her armpit. I'm sure for this summer dress, the last thing you need is something right up your armpit on a moist, hot summer day. Am I right? Or am I right? So I'm just going to try to make that taper. Like so. And I already see the forms forming. The forms be forming. Okay, and then uh, I'm actually going to lower everybody here because oh. <laughs> I think the back is always just going to lay a little lower. So shift, so I make sure that it's properly lowered. Gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. Peaches, 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 peaches. I'm going to taper this. just so that it's a little more snatched, but I think I made it too tight. Yes, this is very tight on her. Okay. So I'm gonna make this just a little bigger and I'm going to align these because I don't know about you guys, but it looks a little off. So I'm just gonna take this time to do that, okay. Make this a little bit bigger, make that a little bit bigger. Sim. Now, should help quite a bit. Around her chest is still very big. I mean, very, what? Very tight. So let's make it bigger. A little bit more. Because a lot of people are like, oh, this needs to be fitted. But there's a difference between being fitted and just being ridiculously too small. And so we want to get out of the ridiculously too small world and we want to get into the fitted. I'm going to keep it at green. Ideally, we want everything in blue. But since this is a top that is more or less fitted on her body, I won't let it sweat me. I won't. I will not do that. Okay, and 
actually i'm gonna see if this just just hear me out all right just work with me i'm just gonna make this shape and see if that helps think that works I don't think this shape works it's actually pretty gross okay yep. I was like I don't need tapering that severe but I totally do I totally do I'm gonna lower this down to this. And I'm gonna bring everybody down to around the same length. Cool. I don't mind having too much room here because we do have to eventually put in the darts. So I'm not too worried about the fit right now. I am just trying to get this guy to lay in a way that is proper. Yeah, I think that's the height that I want it to be in. I'm just trying to hit a right angle at this pattern so it looks more seamless. Cool. And I actually think this guy can be pulled backwards like this, <laughs> just like that. I'm just gonna shimmy all of my shapes over. I have the I have the peaches song stuck in my head. Did I sing that at one point? Anyway, sorry. Real professional tutorial you're watching here. Okay. Once I get that shape. Alright. I think that's a winner. Well, maybe it's not. Let me see where this is hitting. I think these straps should be almost like at the side here. Okay. Thank you, Margo. Thank you, thank you for your services. I'm just going to get rid of this. And just move this guy over. Cool. All right. <laughs> it's so big. All right. Now that I have everything fitting pretty decent, I'm going to control H, see where it's at. Okay, cool. And then now let's make some straps. So I'm gonna again build it from here. It's just easy because they're such simple shapes and that's why I like building from this guy. Um, but also what's great about this is that I can just 
rotate it and then it'll be my straps. And how I'm rotating it is um, with this tool I move it and then before I let go I right click and this menu pops up and I could snap it to wherever it needs to go. So it's a little tool that I like. And I'm going to turn on my arrangements and just snap it to their sides. Turn off. And I'm going to delete the relationships because we don't need them to be sewn to each other. Ah, okay. Actually, I'm going to delete one and just make one and control D it. Control D. Control D. Shift D. What happened? Buddy. Uh. Bugging what? Oh, I see. Probably because okay, so that, no worries. I don't need the relationship anymore, uh, but I do need it to be control D. There we go. I just wanted to make another strap so that way I can just make adjustments on one strap and not worry about the other strap. Yeah. So I did make these gaps, well, puh. okay, never mind. I'm going to make these two again, because that's what we started with, and two here. Perfect. So I'm going to change the lengths, oopsies, change length to two. Change length to two, and I'm going to make sure that it's extending on the right side. Cool. And then I'm going to sew this guy into this guy. And this back part into this back part. Oh, no. This back part into this back part. All right, and so since they are going to travel quite a bit, I'm going to uh, freeze my shirt so that the shirt doesn't go flying. And I'm actually going to shimmy this guy over. Shift to shimmy it over. Cool. Because I think they were a little too close. And then I'm going to... Oh. Control K the front so that it looks like it makes sense and it's not just hovering above her body. Cool. Once you have these straps in a position that you like, I highly recommend freezing them because they will move around as you sim and sometimes they fall off and that is so annoying. So please sim. I mean sim. Uh, please freeze them once you like where they are. And now we have to create a dart from here. So around here is where I need that to happen. So I'm going to do something like this. And I'm just going to move this guy over. And that should help with the situation, the hand that we were dealt, and I'm just gonna make it wider. I'm just eyeballing it because I'm just a crazy girl, and I just lowered it so that it gives the illusion that it's coming from over there. Cool, let's check out our string because it might look good, but it might be like extremely like comically tight on her, which it is. The red for me, I, I try to avoid red in my strain maps unless it's 
like a bodycon tube top or dress. I forgot what it's called, but the traditional Chinese garment that's very tight on the body. So that one, I remember doing an exercise for Marvelous when I used to work for them. And that was the one time where they were like, yeah, it makes sense that it would be so skin tight because it, it was made to be very form fitting. So that's the only time that I accept red. <laughs> that sounds kind of weird, but it's the truth. Okay, so there's quite a bit of tension here. So what I will do, I think... I think these guys are pulling quite a bit on this guy. I don't know if, if it's a problem that I really care about because I feel like everything else is working just fine. But let me actually step it down to 15 and just see if that's actually the shape that I want. Sometimes in the higher particle distance it's hard to see. I'm so used to teaching without my camera, so I thought I could just pause and drink my water. It could speak with me, but I guess I didn't so successfully do that. Okay, so I think this is more of a scoopy look. I, I think I can get away with a little bit more of a scoop shape than what I have. So I'm just going to do that very thing and scoopity do. Cool. And there is some excess here that I want to address. I'm going to see if I, I can just do this and maybe that'll help. Fingers crossed. Doesn't feel like it, but I don't know. Kind of helps, I guess. It's a lot of excess. So I'm going to move this guy. I'm going to do control so that it goes on the angle. And I'm just going to tighten that area, just a touch. Just so that we can get rid of that excess. Okay. And I bet what that did was really strain the front. Let's see. You know what? Not too bad. We were already dealing with that much. So I'm just going to let it go. For now, it's not too bad. I do think these go on a diagonal so they don't go straight. I feel like they kind of curve, so I'm just going to shimmy it into a diagonal and then just kind of shimmy this guy over this way. And then this way. Just to visually kind of capture this line. Actually, now that I look at it, I think this whole dart can move a little bit closer to each other. Like so. I think that's pretty good. And then the next thing I notice is that the straps are actually pretty tiny. So... Let's make it a skinny legend. Okay, so we're going to change the length to one. I'm going to do both sides so that, you know, just evenly distributing that. And one last time to one. Oops. Cool. Yeah, right. Cool. So we have a good base. The last thing I want to address is the bows. So if you see here, you see a little something, right? You see that little loop? <laughs> little loop? Loop? You see that? You see that? These aren't just regular, regular straps. 
I know, right? I just picked the highest res stuff, but you can see it here. It's clearly, there's clearly a bow there. So, how I go about making bows is actually, I, I would say, kind of different from the tutorials that I see online. And uh, it's because I do it in a lot of different pieces. So, let's start with... Uh, I'm just gonna think how I want to sew this guy together. So I'm gonna make two horizontal lines like this. And then I'm just gonna make sure that they're kind of in the middle or the apex. Cool, that looks good. And I'm just gonna copy paste because I'm too lazy. And I'm going to get rid of my internal lines and just make this super small. So this is going to be the first thing that I do in bows is I add the middle knot part first. And how I do that is I move these guys down over here and I sew them uh, onto these internal lines but this guy if you look I think the bows are coming out from these sides rather than the top like it's not going perpendicular I think it's going parallel you see how the loops are here yeah so like basically what I'm saying is the bow the loops aren't gonna go this way they're gonna go up and down like the same direction as the straps hopefully that makes sense but that means if i were to do that that means this loops opening has to be perpendicular now that's a lot of thought but i think if you just follow along with me you will see what i am talking about so let me just go wait what i'm gonna delete this guy because i can always just make one and duplicate it over that is no problem for me. Okay, cool. And so I'm going to make two uh, internal lines here. Okay. And these are what I'm going to use to sew onto my guy like so okay and i'm going to make this guy just a little bit bigger and i'm just snapping these guys to be one Cool. Gorgeous. Cool. And then same thing with this guy. I'm going to actually lower the particle distance. Just because, as you see, he's very uh, low poly and I feel like I don't see what I'm actually doing. So I'm going to step him down to about 10. So that way I can have a more complex shape to work with instead of struggling so much. This is the only time that I recommend to my students to lower particle distance. Okay. So now I have my middle and that's going to be my base. And these lines are what I'm actually going to use for multi-purpose to make the rest of my uh, ribbon. So I'm just gonna control H this guy so it gives it a nice volumetric shape. And I'm gonna copy paste once again and get rid of the internal lines here. And this is what I'm going to use as my first ribbon. So I'm gonna control K this guy so that we just focus on this guy and we're just gonna sew him to one of the loops i mean one of the sewing relationships doesn't matter 
Just make sure you unloop him so that it's just a ribbon. And boom, we have one of our ribbons already. Snap! Are you a genius? Yes, you are. Gorgeous. Okay. Just really doesn't want to lay flat, but that's okay. I can fix that later and then copy paste. And we're going to make a, another sewing relationship. And I'm just going to shimmy him over so he doesn't need to travel so much. And blam. We've got two loops. Gozwa, gozwa, gozwa. Hello. There we go. And if your loops are facing the wrong way, you could just do flip normal. So right click, flip normal. Shablammy. And then from here, I will just lengthen the bottoms a little bit, and I'll give both of them a little tapering. Gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. I think it's just crawling into each other because I have this guy frozen, and it might be just like a weird sim. Or not. And another thing that I like to do is, I don't do it all the time, but since this guy is such a small space, I don't like stacking a bunch of relationships on top of each other. So in this case, I didn't, I don't like too much that I'm sewing this, this ribbon onto the same internal line that's being sewn down. I feel like when you do that, it's a lot of different moving parts that Marvelous has to constantly calculate for. And so it's, it'll be a little dramatic. Okay, so <laughs> that being said, let's just keep on going. I'm going to, uh, actually at this point, what I'll do is deactivate pattern and sewing and shift Q so that I can bring those guys back in later. What I am going to do now is I'm going to sew one part of this guy into this guy. Oop. Like that. And control K my loop again. And same thing, it's just like the same thing as, you know, making your loops. But the thing is, after you attach it, you should sew it together to make your first ribbon loop. Like so. Okay, and don't worry about the size, we could always customize that later. But for now, let's just work with this guy. And same thing, I'm going to grab this guy and sew it onto this guy. And let's control K this since we are only working with this guy. Like so. Nice. And then I will sew him to itself. Like so. Okay. And same thing. I'll just flip normal so that it looks the faces are facing the right way. I'm going to bring back my uh, ribbon and actually I'm going to put position them for success so I'm just going to position them a little bit lower so that they don't like fight with this guy too much. Okay, gorgeous. And now what I would do is I would just freeze these ribbons and I just make my loops a little bit larger. So how I go about doing that is just simply scaling it. Hit. I'll do control H so that it figures itself out faster. And then we're just gonna scale it more and more, little by little. Cool. And then once again, we're going to bring these guys back in, sim it all together. I actually think these guys can be a little smaller. I'm just going to shrink the length down. Just a touch. Gorgeous. And now that I've done my big movement, I'm going to unshrink it. And then this knot, I will also do uh, reactivate it. 
was like, no, nah, there's too many pirates. But it's also a very small area as well, so that probably doesn't help. But this is a way for me to get a nice ribbon. Um, let me up the particle distance, because honestly, that's a really ugly ribbon. There we go, jeez. She's like, now I can think. And then... What I can do, actually... Let me control K this, and then I'm going to unstrengthen this guy. And move him down to particle distance 5. See if that helps. And that does help with the loops. There we go. And I think I can actually make this guy just a touch smaller so that it gives it a little bit more of that taunt ribbony look. Give that illusion. And honestly, so for me, this is like you can also put another like uh, ribbon part on top to give that illusion of more of a knot shape. But this is a good base for how I do a lot of my ribbons. Just because in this way, I can control the loops and the strappy parts separately and this knot part separately. And I don't need to worry about pinning and then like if it unpins, then it kind of ruins the whole entire thing. Instead of worrying about that, I just kind of compartmentalize. And so I'm going to do Shift D so that I can, or Control D, so that I can get the other guy for free. So... That is why I just work on one and then copy paste it all over the place. Cool. Cool. And with that, guys, I'm going to unfreeze everything so you see the magic. But that is how I get Barbie's gingham dress in Marvelous Designer. That was really fun. Um, I want to do these more because I do want to get back into my personal pieces. And hopefully I can bring this guy very quickly into LookDev and give you guys a nice render before this video goes up. Don't hate me if I don't. But also, uh, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you guys got some neat tips and tricks. Um, yeah, I hope... Uh, that was fun and hopefully next time I can do another Barbie outfit or maybe I can do something from Oppenheimer. I don't know. The world is my oyster. But anyway, bye guys. I hope you enjoyed. See ya.